We bring you the latest updates from the PNA Newsroom. House Speaker Martin Romualde said the friendly ties between the Philippines and the United States will continue to remain strong in the aftermath of the meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Romualde said he is seeing an improved bilateral partnership, particularly in the areas of economic, defense, cultural, and investment cooperation. He also echoed the call of the president for American businessmen to do more business in the Philippines and venture into the manufacturing infrastructure, power generation, and private-public partnership projects. The United States is among the country's major sources of foreign direct investments along with Singapore, Japan, and the Netherlands according to the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Filipinos working abroad are reminded to be cautious when it comes to sending balikbayan boxes to their families in the country. The Bureau of Customs said they have received reports of the modus operandi of freight forwarders abroad who are charging low processing fees but are not paying their counterparts for the processing and releasing of cargoes. To ensure that their families and relatives received their parcels, the BOC said they are in constant communication with the Door-to-Door -Door Consolidators Association of the Philippines in compliance with the directives of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The public is advised to email the BOC for queries and follow their social media accounts for advisories. Taiwan is resuming visa-free entry policy for Philippine passport holders. Starting September 29, Taiwan will be including the country in its list of states eligible for visa-free entry. The Bureau of Consular Affairs says Filipino nationals are eligible for the visa exemption program of up to 14 days except for those who are holding diplomatic or official passports. Travelers are permitted to undergo a mandatory three-day quarantine period at home as long as they have their own bedroom and bathroom. They will also be required to undergo self-monitoring for four days. Other countries included in the list are Chile, Israel, Japan, South Korea, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Brunei. The Philippine News Agency placed third in the regional level of the 122nd Philippine Civil Service Commission Anniversary Online Photography Contest. PNA photographer Joseph Razon was declared one of the three winners for the individual category in the National Capital Region with his photo entry titled Flyby. The photo was taken in Rizal Park in preparation for the 124th Independence Day celebration last June. The CSC Central Office announced last Wednesday the national level winners of its photo contest with the theme Transforming Public Servants Towards Resiliency. In the individual category, Jefferson Delmo of Tesda Region 9 bagged first place with his photo Resilient as a Nation. In the group category, Tagaytay Treatment and Rehabilitation Center Employees Association in Region 4 and their photo entry, We Rise as One, won third place. Storm warning signals are likely to be raised later tonight as Tropical Storm Carding approaches northern Luzon. It's 5 p.m. bulletin. Weather Bureau Pagasa said Carding continues to move westward with maximum sustained winds of 75 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 90 kilometers per hour. Carding was last seen 970 kilometers east of northern Luzon. Pagasa warns the public to brace for heavy to intense rains by Saturday evening until Monday, especially in Batanes, Cagayan, Isabela, and the northern portion of Aurora. Moderate to heavy rains with at times intense rains will be felt over Cagayan, Ilocos provinces, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, the northern portion of Zambales, and the rest of Cordillera administrative region. The rest of Cagayan Valley and Central Zone will experience light to moderate with at times heavy rains. The ornamental fish industry is now gaining more attention. As the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute vowed to strengthen the country's fish farming and support its producers and breeders. 
Hobbyist and small-time producers then expressed their delight upon knowing about the government's initiative. Let's hear more about its promising opportunities from Stephanie Sevillano. 24-year-old Julius has been long exposed to fish pets, especially that his peers are fond of it. But it was just this year that he has personally enjoyed taking care of ornamental fish as his stress reliever. In just five months, he's able to raise 14 types of ornamental fish in a low-cost startup. The majority of ornamental fish ay madaling alagaan. Marami nag-aalaga sa kanila dahil sa appearance nila for their beauty and exotic characteristics. Hindi naman ganun kahirap kasi unlike sa saltwater fish, kailangan mo ng high tech aquarium. As a new hobbyist, Julius can't help but share how promising the income in the industry can be. Like him, 37-year-old teacher Jeffrey San Juan attested how this hobby, which he has boosted during lockdown season, can be of great fun. This hobby has brought him additional income as he raises trains of agapi, betta fish, and goldfish among others, and sells them online or to pet shops. Range naman ng kitaan. Dati kasi sa pandemic po, nung pandemic po, ang lakas. Mababa na po ang 15K monthly. Mababa na po yun. So ngayon naman po, bumalik na kasi back, parang unti-unti ng back to normal na po, lahat balik sa work na. Siguro, nasa ang ano lang, swerte ka na 10K monthly. Upon hearing the government's target to boost and support the industry, both Julius and Jeffrey express the light as they recognize its high investment return potential. During the first Ornamental Fish Summit, the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute highlighted the future prospects of the country's freshwater ornamental fish industry. This is considered the second largest hobby worldwide. Ornamental fish industry in the Philippines is a promising industry. The presence of the country's vast resources in marine fisheries gave way for marine ornamental fish for export. And lately, fresh water also has started to gain its needs. And FRDI Executive Director Lilian Garcia noted that boosting the fish farming is very doable, as it requires little investment and engagement, yet capable of generating high profit in the global market. The NFRDA revealed that the Philippines has 14.3 million production volume of freshwater ornamental fish a year, valued at over 145.98 million pesos. Hence, the government's initiative to support local producers and breeders. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Stephanie Civiliano. And that's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Marita Muahe. Thank you for watching and have a good day.